Welcome to the thrilling depths of the 1964 television series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, where the vast unknown of the ocean serves as the backdrop for an unforgettable journey. As we navigate the intriguing waters of this classic show, a pertinent question arises. Which classic Hollywood actor from the series holds the title as your personal favorite? The enduring qualities that make Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea an everlasting symbol of the industry are as intriguing as the uncharted territories explored by the crew of the Seaview. What timeless elements do you believe contribute to its status as a cultural landmark? Before delving into the random facts that add layers to this iconic series, we're curious about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Your stories and recollections are treasures waiting to be shared, so please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Now, let's unravel some captivating random facts about the show that might surprise even the most dedicated fans. Did you know that? Insert random facts about the show here. As we embark on this journey through the fascinating world of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, we invite you to share your thoughts, memories, and reflections. Your contributions make this exploration all the more enriching. Your stories are the tide that brings life to the legacy of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. We would love to hear from you in the comments below. During the fourth season of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, no actresses appeared in any episode, whether in speaking or non-speaking roles. This unusual choice set the season apart, focusing solely on male characters. Despite this departure from the norm, the show continued to draw viewers. In the second season, ABC's request for a lighter tone led to an increase in Monster of the Week plots. However, remnants of the original tone persisted, with some episodes delving into Cold War themes and speculative fiction. This balancing act between light and serious themes showcased the series' adaptability. In 1964, Donruss released a set of 66 black and white trading cards featuring stills from the first season. Priced at 5 cents per pack, these cards have become collector's items, with mint condition sets fetching several hundred dollars today. This trading card release reflected the show's popularity and the value placed on memorabilia from its early years. In conclusion, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea navigated through unique choices in its fourth season, struck a balance between light and serious tones in the second season, and left a mark on pop culture with its trading card set. The series remains an intriguing part of television history, capturing the essence of its time. Del Monroe, known for his role as Seaman Kowalski in the TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, also appeared in the original movie, playing virtually the same character named Seaman Kowski. This unique connection between the film and the TV show sets the stage for an exploration of the show's continuity and casting choices. As the series progressed, it not only maintained its popularity, but also shared a significant behind-the-scenes connection with other iconic shows of its time. The props used in Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea found a second life in productions like Lost in Space, The Time Tunnel, Land of the Giants, and Batman. This shared use of props provides a fascinating glimpse into the collaborative and resourceful nature of television production in the 1960s. In addition to these shared props, the show underwent notable changes in its second season. The season opener, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, Jonah and the Whale, marked a milestone as the first episode broadcast in color. The Sea View, the iconic submarine, underwent a redesign with a single set of observation windows and a hatch for the flying sub. Season 2 introduced new uniforms and the flying sub itself, with six different models used for filming over the subsequent seasons. Delving further into the show's history, Del Monroe's dual roles in the movie and TV series highlight the continuity maintained in the character of Seaman Kowalski. This consistency across different mediums adds depth to the character's journey and showcases the commitment to storytelling within the voyage to the bottom of the sea universe. In conclusion, the series not only entertained viewers with its unique underwater adventures, but also shared a tangible connection with other popular shows of its time. The reuse of props and the evolution of the show's visuals and characters contribute to its enduring legacy in the realm of classic television. In a pivotal moment for the casting of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, James Doohan, renowned for his later role as Chief Engineer Montgomery Scott in Star Trek, was initially offered the part of Chief Sharky. However, he declined the offer, opting for the iconic role in Star Trek that defined his career. 
Terry Becker ultimately stepped into the role of Sharky. The series' journey began with the color film pilot, 11 Days to Zero, though it was originally broadcast in black and white. Since 1993, Sci-Fi has consistently aired the pilot in its original color format, revealing the early vision of the show. The Season 1, Volume 1 DVD even includes both the black and white broadcast version and the color filmed original, offering enthusiasts a unique glimpse into the show's evolution. In a notable casting consideration during the 1965 season, Susan Flannery was contemplated for a recurring role as Admiral Nelson's secretary. The character intended to serve as an onshore ally and potential romantic interest for Captain Crane was abandoned as demographic analysis revealed the series' stronger appeal to children than adults. These behind-the-scenes choices, from casting decisions to the unique airing history of the pilot, provide intriguing insights into the development and evolution of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. The series not only navigated the depths of the ocean, but also the challenges and opportunities of television production in the 1960s. In the depths of the 1964 TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, an intriguing element surfaces the Seaview's lesser-known counterpart, the Polydor, met a swift demise in only the second episode. This early twist sets the tone for the series, hinting at the unexpected turns that lie beneath the surface. A peculiar consistency unfolds within the circuitry room scenes. Whether engulfed in flames, post-explosion, or a chaotic combination of both, the door consistently remains unlocked. This small but persistent detail adds a subtle layer of tension and curiosity, reflecting the meticulous yet predictable nature of the show's narrative. As the series progressed, a notable shift occurred in its final two seasons, aligning with the late 1960s trend of embracing paranormal storylines. The Seaview, once a vessel exploring the unknown depths, found itself hosting mummies, werewolves, talking puppets, and even an evil leprechaun. These fantastical additions, adorned with the unmistakable low-budget makeup and costume designs of Irwin Allen's era, marked a departure from the series' original tone. In summary, the 1964 TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea not only submerged viewers into the depths of oceanic exploration, but also navigated unexpected twists with the Polydor's demise, maintained tension through consistently unlocked doors, and ventured into the supernatural in its final seasons. The series' ability to evolve while maintaining a thread of consistency contributes to its enduring legacy in classic television. As we navigate the currents of nostalgia, pondering the depths of television history, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea emerges as a timeless beacon. This 1964 TV series wasn't just a voyage into the uncharted waters of the deep sea, it was a plunge into the unexplored realms of our imaginations. As you reminisce about the sea view, Admiral Nelson, and the enigmatic allure of the unknown, consider the profound impact this series had on shaping your perception of science fiction. Perhaps it ignited a passion for exploration or fueled a fascination with the mysteries that lie beneath the surface. Whatever the case, the echoes of this underwater odyssey linger in the corridors of our memories. Now, it's your turn to share the treasures you've uncovered in the vast ocean of voyage to the bottom of the sea. Dive into the comments, let the waves of nostalgia wash over you, and share your favorite moments, characters, or the lingering mysteries that continue to captivate your mind. Whether you're a seasoned submariner or a newcomer to the Seaview's crew, your reflections add to the collective tapestry of admiration for this classic series. As we sail through the currents of time, our individual connections with Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea create a mosaic of shared experiences. So, let your thoughts surface, like bubbles breaking through the ocean's skin, and join this community of fellow explorers in celebrating the enduring legacy of a television masterpiece. Thank you for embarking on this reflective journey with us. Your time and sentiments are the compass that guides us through the depths of shared memories. Until our next exploration into the annals of television history, may your nostalgia be ever vibrant and your love for the Seaview unwavering. Fondly, 